stretch of the North Fork of the Shenandoah River. So we've looked at physical testing, we looked at temperature, we've done chemical testing, and now we're going to look at biological indicators. These are really important to consider. A lot of the organisms that we'll talk about at a later time, they complete most or all of their life cycle in the water. And so they are really good indicators over long-term water quality. When we looked at the chemical tests, we were looking at a snapshot of what's happening right now. When we are looking at organisms at the biological indicators, they're giving us an indication of what's happening over a much longer period of time. So here at the stretch of the river, um, you're going to want to look for and test in the riffle areas or the water that is moving much more swiftly over rocks. This is where you're going to find or have the best chance of finding these organisms. A lot of them are limited by dissolved oxygen in the sense that if dissolved oxygen gets too low, they're going to die off. So they're going to be paying out where dissolved oxygen is plentiful, which is where these riffle areas are. Now, in the true sense, if we were out here in the field with you, we would actually test this entire stretch from bank to bank of the river. However, we're not going to do that at this point. What we're going to do is demonstrate to you how you would actually go about doing it, uh, just with the understanding that you would be collecting in different areas. Ms. Coos has been so gracious as to help, uh, help with this. There's a couple things that you need to know about before you get in the water to, to collect these organisms. One, you need someone to hold the net. Ms. Coos, thank you for holding the net. We're going to want to position the net um, so that the water is flowing into it. We want to trap any of those organisms that are going to be dislodged from the rocks momentarily. And so having it in that area is going to be helpful. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rub the rocks. And I'm going to rub the rocks for approximately 60 seconds. By that point, any that are going to be dislodged, um, I'm going to be successful in doing that. I'm not going to pick a huge stretch to do this in because if you have a real large area that you're trying to rub rocks in, what'll happen is you'll, you'll dislodge them and before you can get to, before they can get to the net, they will then hang onto another rock and you won't get a chance to observe them. So we're going to keep our testing area limited to prevent any of those occurrences from happening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to walk, I'm not walking through the area I'm going to test because I could potentially dislodge organisms before they get caught in the net. So I'm just going to walk a little bit away from it and work my way down to it so I'm not contaminating my sample area. So let's go ahead and we'll demonstrate. If you want to get in position, I'm just going to kind of test, uh, get out here. That's perfect. Right there is perfect. So you'll notice here in the river, there are a lot of large rocks. Obviously, I can't pick those up and rub them, but I can pick up some of these smaller ones. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get in here and I'm just going to rub the rocks. If they're small enough, I'm going to pick them up and rub them on all sides. But if they're too big for me to pick up, I'm just going to rob and dislodge. I just got some snails. Hopefully they got in there. Okay? And again, I'm going to do this for about 60 seconds. We're going to talk about some of the features and adaptations that these organisms have. But this is going to... I, I know we're getting stuff. I can feel stuff that I'm just watching. All right, it's been about 60 seconds. And so I'm going to, we're going to pick the net up. And then let's, what, maybe we can go over this way. Yep. Perfect. And so when you get done, you'll want to, we can lay it down. And this is where ice cube trays come in handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ice cube tray. I'm going to go grab some water from the river, and then we're going to start uh, sorting out what we found. All right. So we can just set this here, and I'll give one to you. Now, at first glance, it looks like uh, we probably didn't get a whole lot. But I know we did, and the reason is it may not look like there's a whole lot here is because these organisms are small. Yeah, we can see them with our eye. We don't need a microscope for them, but they are small. The other thing is that they are really good at clinging, and so um, 
what I'm noticing here, I'm going to carefully put them in, um, in the ice cube trays. And so what we're doing is basically we're just sorting to see what we've collected. And then we can use that to determine, wow, there's a lot of organisms here that are only found in really good areas that have really clean water. Or we're finding organisms that you would only find in really polluted water. And so that's gonna give us a picture, again, long term, of what is happening in this stretch of the river. So all you wanna do when, the, when you're out in the field doing this, uh, you just wanna pick up any leaves or any debris because they're probably stuck on them. And if you look carefully, You'll see them squirming around. They do need water, which is why we put water in the ice cube trays. Um, so once we sort them out, you may not know exactly what you have at the moment. That's totally fine. Uh, what you'll do is you'll just you'll just put them in different compartments. If you see some that look alike, it's okay to put them in the same compartment. Uh, but you do want to be careful if you don't know how to identify them. Uh, you don't necessarily want to put put. Um, put them in the same compartment if you don't know what they are because some of these organisms are food and some of them are going to be predators. So if you put them in the same container, uh, you may not have an accurate count because some, some of them are going to be missing by the time you get around to it. <laughs> so that's essentially what we're going to do. We're just going to kind of look through. Ooh, I found a leech. Mm -hmm. That's actually the second one I found. Yes, I see you. The leeches are the hardest, I think, to get. They're so slimy. Okay, but if you um, if you're looking carefully, you'll be able to see them moving around. Oh, gotcha! Woo! Sorry, I got excited. Oh, look! I'm pretty yeah. sure that's a stone fly. I'll try not to. I'll try not to get too crazy, but I get really excited when we find certain ones. Oh, there's a fast one. Get in here. All right, and so that's all we're that's all we're gonna do is kind of sort through and look and see what what organisms are present here at the North Fork.